We tend to talk a lot on this channel about doing our best to work with nature rather than against it, and usually that's in regards to the natural techniques we use in our vegetable garden. But it's not all about plants and soil, because sometimes we also like to highlight the wild animals that share our space, some who simply drop by while migrating up and down the continent, and others whose territories are somewhat more local. But there's also the select few who, like us, have chosen to make themselves at home. One of which has become such a permanent fixture that we've even decided to officially give him a name. And I'm of course talking about our resident groundhog, Gordon. Now, we first met Gordon a few years ago when he was just a little pup. He arrived in the middle of summer and immediately took a liking to the clover and other plants that grow naturally in our lawn. Eventually, he became so comfortable here that he even began exploring our back porch and indulging in seeds that were scattered below our bird feeders. Then fast forward a few years and we've come to know Gordon quite well. He's now very comfortable with our presence, and we often spend time observing his daily habits. So you can imagine our surprise when one morning this spring we discovered that Gordon was a new mom. Obviously some of his, or I guess her, activities had escaped our attention. But before we focused on the comings and goings of these adorable new arrivals, I thought it might first be interesting to find out just a little bit about how they got here. And the best place to start is with hibernation, a sort of suspended animation that allows an animal to sleep through the harshness of winter. In the case of groundhogs, this period can sometimes last as long as five months, from late fall when food becomes scarce, until early spring when their habitat becomes more habitable. But that's a very long time to go without food or water. So to accomplish this, a groundhog must conserve energy in a pretty serious way. For example, their body temperature drops from about 37 degrees Celsius down to as low as 2 degrees Celsius. Their heart rate slows down from 80 beats per minute to about 5, and even their breathing slows down from 16 breaths per minute to as little as 2. But even with all these adaptations, groundhogs typically lose a quarter of their body weight during the winter. So, as you can imagine, they tend to wake up pretty hungry. Male groundhogs are the first to emerge in February, when there's still plenty of snow on the ground. And then he quickly gets to work inspecting his territory for any signs of threats, either from hungry predators or from other male groundhogs trying to encroach on his turf. Next, he focuses his attention on the burrows of nearby females. I guess, hungry or not, some things are still more important than food. Once he finds one, he heads inside. But this first visit is just to get to know each other a little bit. Then, once he's confident that he's made a good first impression and everything is secure, he returns back to his own burrow for another month or so of sleep. Oh, and while he does that, maybe I'll also take just a quick moment to talk about groundhog burrows, because they're actually quite impressive. You see, far from just a hole in the ground, a typical burrow usually consists of a primary tunnel that spans 15 to 20 feet, with at least two entrances. One as the main access point, and another as an observation post and occasional quick getaway. Off the primary tunnel, there's usually several chambers, one for sleeping, one for pooping, and in the case of female groundhogs, one for rearing children as well. Plus, some groundhogs will even dig secondary tunnels for additional space and to confuse would-be predators with multiple dead ends. And despite all of the dirt, groundhogs usually keep a pretty tidy and comfortable home. For example, the poop chamber is regularly covered with a fresh layer of soil to keep things sanitary. And the sleeping chamber and nursery are fitted with a nest of grasses and leaves. As you can see here from a couple months ago when, now in hindsight, Gordon was obviously preparing for her litter. And besides the pups, I'm sure the clean home is also appreciated by all of the potential guests as well. Like hungry frogs and toads in search of worms and insects. Or chipmunks, rabbits, skunks, and snakes who just need a safe space to hide for a bit. But despite their occasional willingness to share their home with other critters, groundhogs tend to stick to themselves. For example, female groundhogs usually space themselves out so that their territories rarely overlap. And likewise, each male groundhog goes to great lengths to protect his territory of about two to three acres from any other males in the area. However, the male's domain does usually encompass the burrow of at least two adult females. And that's because groundhogs are not monogamous. So when the weather warms up in March, the male once again emerges from his burrow and then drops in on each of the females, this time sticking around for a day or two. But once mating is complete, the male gets back to work on security and eating as much as possible to prepare for next year's hibernation. Meanwhile, the females, 
stay inside their burrows throughout their month-long pregnancy. Once born, the baby groundhogs are hairless, helpless, and only a few inches long. Their ears are folded shut, they can't yet open their eyes, and like other mammals, they consume only their mother's milk. But by four weeks, they're furry, fully weaned, and ready to explore the burrow. Then by six or seven weeks, they can finally emerge with their mother and begin munching on clover and grass. And that brings us right back to where this video began, Gordon's litter of eight adorable groundhog pups. For the first few days, they kept pretty close to the entrance of the burrow, content just to be outside in the sunshine. But as you can see, like us, the flies found them to be pretty irresistible. I guess being holed up underground for a month or two will do that. Anyway, Gordon, looking rather exhausted, did a pretty great job of showing them the ropes, often taking them out to munch on nearby plants and teaching other basic life skills. But eventually, they were ready to begin exploring on their own, which finally gave Mom a chance to do some much-needed housework and maintenance. Toward the end of their first week above ground, several of the pups were determined to climb even higher, which provided us with literally hours of entertainment, because, as you know, what goes up typically comes down. But this is also an important part of their youthful development, because though we usually think of them as ground dwellers, groundhogs are surprisingly good climbers. In fact, they can even climb trees when in need of a higher vantage point. Now, we've not seen Gordon hanging out on high branches, but she does often climb up onto our porch and has on a number of occasions even scaled the wooden posts to lounge on our railing. So whether it's to get a better view or just a safe place to relax, either way, this is a valuable skill to practice. And practice they did, until eventually one of them succeeded, and then another, and another. And you know, I may be personifying a bit here, but I can't help but think that Gordon was a pretty proud mama. But life's not all about learning new skills, because like most young children, they also enjoy play fighting with their siblings. And then afterward taking long naps. Anyway, the pups have been with us now for a few weeks, and have been slowly venturing farther and farther from home, which is also an important step, because time flies, and by about August, each of them will have gone forth into the world and dug a new home of their own. You see, as I mentioned, groundhogs are typically very solitary animals, and in most cases, after leaving their mother, they tend to live entirely alone, only getting together for a few days once a year for the purposes of mating. So, as young and innocent as they look right now, by the end of their second winter, these little guys will wake up from hibernation and get the whole process started all over again. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. Oh yeah, one more thing. Now that Gordon is a mom, we've begun to question the appropriateness of her given name. So we considered changing it to Gordana, or some other more obviously female G name, like Greta or Gertrude. It also occurred to us that we could just leave it as is, because it is 2021 after all. But in the end, we decided that the easiest solution would be to simply make Gordon her last name instead of her first. And so I'd now like to officially introduce our resident family of groundhogs, now known collectively as the Gordons. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you soon. Oh good, you're still here. And look, I know, two afterthoughts in one video? That's a little much. But unfortunately, these things just always seem to take me a lot longer than I expect. So, for example, a moment ago when I said that the Gordons had been with us for a few weeks, well, it's now been a couple of months, and so I'm sorry for the wait. But on the bright side, I am able to provide another super quick update. Most of the pups have now left the family home, and several of them seem to have set up shop in the wood piles that we've been accumulating by slowly cleaning up other parts of our property. And while we do occasionally see some of the siblings hanging out together, they mostly appear to be solitary at this point. We've even witnessed them gathering nesting material, so I guess they're getting ready for their first hibernation. Like I said, time flies. Anyway, I hope you're all doing well. And we'll see you soon. For real this time.